Afternoon folks, it's Friday, you've made it, congratulations to you. I hope you're all doing well, and I hope you're all, you know, having a good end to your week and everything's going well in the world of you. If it's not, then settle in for some hobby nightmares. We are going to get into, into some rants in this one, I assure you. If you like what I do, the subscribe button is down below, the Patreon button is also down below if you want to help me continue doing this on YouTube, and also if you want the channel to grow, then subscribe if you've never been here before, and if you have been here before, here before, then make sure to pass this video along to people who you think might get a kick out of it. There is a massive spider somewhere in the upper floors of my house. It is around here somewhere, and listen, I don't have anything against spiders, like at all. Nothing against them at all. I think they get rid of bugs, I think that they keep the house clean, you know, I I've not got nothing against them whatsoever. But, there is a limit to the size that I will overlook a spider's presence. And this one is very big. And, I, and, and it was up on the roof yesterday, I didn't get it down, and I just left. Uh, and now it's not there anymore, and I know it's waiting to jump out at me, to jump on my foot, or to, to, to walk on my keyboard and I'm typing. It's waiting, right? I can't be held responsible for my actions and what I'm going to do when I see the spider again. I want to leave him in peace. I want it to leave each other alone. I'm not even going to charge it rent. It can stay over there somewhere, and it'll, and it'll be fine. Wherever you are now, if you're listening to me, please don't run up to me whilst I'm recording this video. Right. King Sized Coffin says uh, MD Mopey Dick. Oh yeah, so th this is a this is a um, a follow-on story to one we had a week ago or, or a little over a week ago now. About a guy called Mopey Dick. So let's get get involved, shall we? As mentioned in the previous nightmare, so King Sized says MD is the hardcore Magic the Gathering player who loves to stomp on unsuspecting new players and those with intellectual handicaps. To add more colour to this unfortunate painting, Mopey Dick regularly shows up at least 30 minutes to an hour before we open up and stands outside waiting to be let in. If you uh, want a quick catch up, King Sized uh, either works in or has his own game store. This is where we are now. Okay. Even peering into the window, looking to see if he notices that he's outside. Yeah, dude, it's a window. It works both ways. We've let him in early a few times out of courtesy since it's hot as hell outside in Arizona. But by this time, he has to come and expe uh, to expect it as normal treatment. Keep in mind, this dude buys almost nothing in the store, has made others very uncomfortable, and yet expects to be treated as some kind of VIP because he's there all the time. I had this all the time in my store, man. All the time. You'd get regulars who wanted preferential treatment when they're one of the things ruining the store for everybody else. You know what I mean? Just because you're there doesn't mean you're a good customer. On this particular day, I walked outside to grab something from my car. I noticed that Mopey Dick is out front taking a smoke break. I walked back to the store and noticed a homeless dude in the corner of the storefront, hands to his crotch, urinating in the st on the store. Yep, broad daylight, taking a leak. In my amazement, I pause, and Mopey Dick leans in and says, That's twice the day he's done that. I stare, slack jawed, turn to the homeless guy and exclaim, Hey, you better not be doing what I think you're doing. The man stops, puts his junk away, and turns his shaking head in protest. <laughs> you've, got to be, you've got to be kidding me, I yell. He approaches me. At this time, Mopey Dick has gone inside to avoid the confrontation and yells back, What the hell am I supposed to do? This is your problem. Oh my god. Oh my god. Use a bathroom. There's a gas station 300 feet down there. Use their public bathroom. Kids are around here. He responds with, Go F yourself. Then con can then continues his talk. It is S-H-I-T talking. Whilst I attempt to intimidate him off the property. 
he casually casts some threats my way and immediately my buddy, Andrew, one of my best friends and a badass customer to the store, rushes outside, stands next to me and states, with the coolness of a bro, just try it pal, there are far more of us than there are of you. Andrew motions to the rest of the regular customers inside. To move things along, Andrew and I continue to verbally combat this dude and finally kick him off the property. As soon as I walk back in, MD laughs to me and says with a self-absorbed smile, Man, that dude is lucky I weren't out there. I would have co completely screwed him up. Give me a break, man. MD had his opportunity and did nothing to protect the store that he frequents, undermines financially and expects to be treated like a VIP. Later that day, I sit next to Mopey and inquire about the, the, his comment. That's twice today. I asked him to clarify what he meant, to which he said he'd seen the guy pee on the shop earlier that day before we opened, while he was waiting outside. Well, why didn't you just say anything to him, I asked, with frustrated curiosity. His response hit me like a ton of bricks, and has now become a running joke in the store, despite it infuriating me. Well, I don't work here. He's got a point. He's got a point. You're asking him to do a public service, which could get him in trouble. You know what I mean? It's not his place. He doesn't work there. Um, he is a bit of a stirrer, don't get me wrong. And he is an annoying customer who, you know, goes out of his way to stomp people and, and rush them away from the hobby. That's true. But he, he's right. He doesn't work there. It's not his place to, to chastise people in the street. I'll leave it at that before I continue to rant about the situation. Anyway, would love your take in the story and hope all is well with you, my friend. If you're digging these stories, I can share more MD uh, bungees with you. Until next time, cheers. Yeah, do so, do so. Um, yeah, it's not his place to, to, to talk to anyone outside the store. He doesn't work there. If he does, he's doing it off the goodness of his own back, of his own heart. And if he doesn't think he can take this guy in a fight, because obviously he's very confrontational, he did the right thing keeping his mouth shut. But, but... That doesn't mean he then needs to stir it with you to get you into trouble and then vacate the premises like a little coward, right? Two sides there. Two sides. Serve says, Hi North, been watching your videos back when you talked about your time working the Games Workshop. I've never written to anyone before so I apologise if this email is poorly written. You can call me Serve. My fairly minor nightmare is about my first armies on parade that I took in. I took part in, sorry. I built an Eldar army just before the event, mostly due to the fact I at the time had a couple of Wraith Knights. I bloody love those models. I showed up at my local games workshop and set up my display board and army. Okay, there were only two other entries to begin with. However, more people will bring in their entries later that day. I can't remember all the armies on display since it's been a while, but I do remember the one from the guy who this nightmare is about. Let's call him Guy for this story. He brought his Age of Sigmar Orc army, decently painted and a very good board to match. He displayed his army in such a way that it looked like a big diorama, orcs charging out from their camp. That's pretty cool. I'll say I was impressed with the entry and it would have been the one I would have voted for but then he had to open his mouth. He walked over to my display and pointed to it saying, that's illegal. My heart dropped and at the time I thought I did something wrong. I responded with, um, what do you mean? To which Guy said, pointing to one of my Wraith Knights, your knight's weapon is hanging off of your board and over to the next person's board. That's illegal. Oh my God. It was, over the, it was over the border of the boards by only about a centimetre or two and wasn't interfering with the other person's stuff. Unfortunately, I couldn't move my knight since I built it in a way that it was integrated into a larger piece of scenery. The story of that model is that it stumbled in the wreckage of a building and is in the process of pulling itself back up. It's in a kneeling pose while the offending arm is swung back. Guy called over the staffer. Oh, really? Really? Guy called over the staffer and repeated to him what he had said to me again, pointing at my entry. I stood there for a moment waiting for my judgement and to my relief, the staffer didn't see a problem with it and let it go. Inside, I am now fuming at Guy, thinking to myself how sad a person has to be to try to get someone disqualified from what should be a fun event where nerds can chill and talk about Warhammer. 
I moved on from it, and I didn't think much more of it. Then, Guy had to open his mouth once again. No, dude, really? When voting started, and would carry on for the rest of the day as customers and late entries popped into the store, Guy would tell people to vote for his army, which infuriated me to no end. Especially since I was still going to vote for his, his entry, despite what he tried to do to me. And there wasn't much other options at the time. The day came to an end, and I didn't vote for Guy's army. Unfortunately, I can't remember who won though, it wouldn't surprise me if he did. And the late entries didn't stand a chance of winning, to be honest. However, I did come in third place. I was over the moon and cheered myself right up, and would be my and it would be my motivation to my next armies on parade I attended a couple of years later. I'll have to send you a story that, uh, of that time later, since it is quite heartwarming. Anyway, thanks for reading. Keep up the good work, sir. Yes, yeah, send me that one too. That is a an absolute prick of a thing to do. That is a prick of a thing to do. But we are in that hobby, though. Unfortunately for us, we are in that hobby. We are in the hobby when min-maxing and going on about, you know, that's illegal or you shouldn't be able to do this or that. We are in the hobby that prescribes to that being something that you, you do to get a win or to get ahead of somebody, right? There are always people like that in this hobby. In every hobby, actually, where there is a competitive sphere to it. It just really bugs me that this is a part of the hobby where competitiveness shouldn't be involved. You should be there to celebrate everybody's art and skill in the hobby. You should not be there to be a little, you know, metagaming dickwad and actually try and get somebody disqualified for something like this. This is poor form, and if you are listening, you shouldn't do things like this. Because one day, people are going to get wise to you, or people are going to turn around and ostracize you from their group, and quite rightly so, right? The gaming side of the hobby is the gaming side of the hobby. You belong there, right? You belong there, min-maxing your rules and going to tournaments. That's what you that's what you should be doing. What you shouldn't be doing is entering into things like this and trying to get other people disqualified for daring to enter into competition that you're clearly going to win anyway. What you were trying to do here is get rid of the competition. What sounds like the only competition you had. What a douchebag. Get out. See you later. Right. Uh, Raiken says... Is it Raiken or is it Raiken? R-E-I-K-A-N. Uh, I'm going to say Raiken. Let's call you Raiken. He says, Hey North, I am fully aware I am going to be roasted for this hobby nightmare, but rest assured, this happened six years ago, and after therapy, the gym, and good friends, I am a different guy now, who is in a steady relationship with a good woman. Yes, it's one of those Friday hobby nightmares. <laughs> Somebody who read the brief, hooray! Yes, I've said that for a while. If I do any sort of relationshipy stuff, it'll be on a it'll be on a Friday. So somebody's read the brief. Let's see if it is though. It might just be hobby hobby bound. You, you never know. Let me set the scene here. All right, I love it when people do this, setting the scene. It's 2017, and my local gaming group is knee deep into the end of seventh edition Warhammer 40k. This is what I consider to be the height of 40k in my group with a lot of people falling off as the lore moved on from what they found interesting. We were always a narrative-heavy group, always running campaigns and helping each other, and, help, and, and also helping each other with the evolving stories of their armies. One of our regulars, Mike, even went through a really hard time with the death of a family member, I believe it was his mother, and so we made our entire campaign for the summer about his army and it's clawing back from oblivion as some sort of meta commentary on his mental state. God, that, that can go one of two ways, man. That can go one of two ways. It can go really well and really help this guy out, or he can just have some sort of mental breakdown halfway through a game that's not going well. Essentially, his regiment crash lands on a planet that is an absolute war zone, populated by Xenos and Chaos players of which most of our group was comprised, all searching for a particular relic. His army fought to survive, week after week, his Imperial Guard being the protagonists of this campaign that were holding vital inform information that meant survival for the whole sector. 
essentially they had data on their defense on the defenses of the whole sector that could shut them all down at a moment's notice and so the space marine players would drop pod in and fight and fight battles elsewhere to try to, to distract the bad guys so mike's forces could get away his last stand consider, consisted of his forces running to a Thunderhawk gunship and barely 15 models making it on board from an army list of 5,000 points. It was an epic final weekend. Michael credits it with saving his life, but I think he's over-egging the pudding there. Still, it was awesome, and that's the kind of thing we used to do. And this is the kind of group we were. A band of brothers. This is nice. And then I met Justine. Here we go. Enter the problem. Right. Then I met Justine. I actually met her through an online group discussing d and I'd recently moved to Italy to pursue my, my career in art and the end of my master's degree in Milan. And she was one of the only English-speaking people on the group, and so we hit it off immediately. She basically had everything I wanted in a woman. Small, dainty, curvy, kind of into metal music, and with an arse that you could crack a walnut on. <laughs> oh, this guy's a man of culture. Okay. Her personality was bubbly and kind, at least to me, and she was into all the things I was into aside from 40k. She told me she liked the sound of it though, and so I took her along to the group to meet the guys. Things went well initially. But I noticed that Justine would make several comments to people in the group that were, how do I put this? Flirtatious? Nothing that could be pinned to stick as an accusation, but just a general demeanour that set off an alarm bell in me that I didn't even know that I had. I had a broken grasp on Italian and was starting to get a weird feeling about what she was saying to the other guys in the group. When I learnt more Italian as time went on, I got more and more uncomfortable with the way she would speak to people. We had been dating for several months, and I was starting to have feelings for her, but I was seeing things I was not quite happy with. Eventually, she started flirting with multiple people in the group, and like in a group just like this, of nerds who were not used to the attentions of women, and fractures and rivalries started to develop. Yeah, yeah. One morning before heading, uh, before I carry on there. Uh, this is what happens when, you know, there is a very innocent group of lads all together just playing with toy soldiers, right? It only takes one grenade thrown in, and it's like you're throwing a grenade into a china shop. If, if a woman goes in there who knows how to manipulate men, it is like throwing a grenade into a china shop. It's all going to come apart. Um, it's not going to end well. One morning before heading to the gaming group, I overheard her on the phone to one of her friends saying, and I quote... I have to go to the gaming group now to see my pets. I'll let you know how we go on later. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So you know what she's there for. Attention. Attention. Attention and to stir shit. That's what she's there for. You know what I thought, though? Thank God they are nothing more than pets to her. Yeah, dude, because you're, you're pussy drunk, that's why. You're pussy drunk. Like you obviously haven't been with a lot of women before. One's shown an interest in you and you're completely besotted with her. You know? Instead of being angry and seeing the toxic behaviour, it's my it's like my private part stuck over and made me follow along. But that is not the worst of it. I mean, I'll be honest with you, I don't think it's your private parts, man. I think it's just your self-esteem. Okay, it, it, it's your it's your mind going. Oh my god, a woman likes me. I must keep this person around. And so you're finding excuses with her with her behaviour that you shouldn't be, right? Anyway, moving on. Justine used to go out on her own a lot, and I didn't mind that. But one day, I got a phone call from a dude. It's a guy called Mark, and he lays something out for me. His name's actually Marco, but he likes to be called Mark. He's a bit of an Anglophile. Good man. I like this man already. <laughs> Any Italian who's like, I love English people, is just like, salt of the earth, dude. Get on with it. Awesome. <clears throat> hey, man, he says on the phone call. 
I'm really sorry to tell you this, but um, I picked up your chick at a club last night. I was getting a weird feeling from her. I honestly thought she was going to try to rob me. She was acting so sketchy, so I took a look at her phone to see who she was texting all the time, just in case she was she was getting a few guys to come around to my place and rob me. Uh, in brackets, this happens a lot in Milan. Turns out she was texting you, and you are her boyfriend. I kicked her out, but we'd done the deed by then, man. I'm really sorry. I wish I could take that back, but I took note of your number while she was in the bathroom when I told her I should take her home. What you do with this information is up to you, my dude, but I'd cut and run. Anyway, I don't really want to talk. I just wanted to lay this on you and give you the information so you could do with it what you will. I'll see ya. Have a good one. And he put the phone down. Wow. Wow. Do you know what? People will have a go at this guy. This guy, Mark, has done nothing wrong. He's done nothing wrong. He's picked up a hot chick at a bar. He's banged the shit out of her. Because obviously she's very good at manipulating people and and for flirtation, so he's banging the shit out of her, and then he's and then he's she's she's acting weird, mainly because she's guilty, right? I'm re I'm reckoning she was guilty, and so she starts texting her boyfriend. Yeah, you know, Mark gets a bit of a bee in his bonnet, is like, what the fuck's going on here, and discovers the truth and kicks her out on the curb, which is the right thing to do, and then goes and calls the guy. Well done, Mark. That's bro code. This is what I mean by omerta. This is bro code. Right? You don't break bro code. Ever. Alright? They're not the enemy. Women are not the enemy. But they're certainly not our, our, our allies. That's what I'll, I'll say that. I'll say that, right? You've got to stick together. You've got to pull each other up and stick together. Alright? You know? If you do that and you help each other and you help each other build each other up, you will get decent women. You will get decent, well-adjusted women in your life. You will, because they're attracted to... St stable attracts stable. Right? It's just horrible that crazy attracts everybody. They, they, they go for everybody. But stable attracts stable. It does. Eventually, you will get a nice, stable girl who, who will come along. Uh, but my God, this must have been horrible. I was crushed. Yeah, pff, no shit. Like a weight had been put on my chest. When she got to my place later that night, I confronted her. We argued with her telling me she was not even aware we were exclusive, which I called bullshit. We'd been going out for several months, and she'd even told me she'd love me. Ah, uh, dude, th th this woman's a fucking crackpot. But eventually she, she won over and stayed in my life. I didn't want to make the hard decision of being alone. But it gets worse. Okay, before we go on, I get what you mean. People are going to expect me to to rip you to shreds for keeping her uh, in, in your life. If you're a lonely guy and you've never really been around women before, being alone is terrifying when they're with you. If you're in a relationship, going back to being alone again is the most terrifying thing you can think of. You've, you've made the wrong decision, but I can see why you've made the wrong decision. You know? Every guy makes this wrong decision at least once. As long as you only make it once, it's fine. A few weeks later, things calm down, and she is telling us about a friend she has met in another gaming group, and she asks the lads in our group if she could bring him around to our gaming day. They all agreed. When the guy turns up, he is a decent looking bloke. Normal, leather jacket, you know, the whole nine yards. He seems like a really cool guy. When people call me by my name though, he goes white and eventually pulls me aside. Hey man, he says, and I immediately recognize his voice from the phone call. Oh no! This fucking... This fucking gash. What, what is going on? Why is she... This woman is a psychopath. What is she doing? I immediately recognize his voice from the phone call. Don't freak out, dude, he says. Justine apologized for lying to me and said she was setting me up with her friend who, came, who comes to this gaming group. She made no mention of you at all. I am already about to leave. I didn't mean for this to happen, my dude. I'm really sorry. See, again, he's doing the bro code thing. 
Like, Mark has been put in a situation by this fucking nut job. And he gets out of it again. He's like, no, I'm not doing this. Sorry, right? He's not breaking bro code. He's not doing it. And do you know, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, Riker, is it Riken or Riken? Uh, anyway, here's the thing. The reason why she went off with this dude is because of that attitude. The reason why he's the only... The reason why she lied to him to get him to that group to spend more time with him is because she's desperate for his approval. Do you know why? Because he, he vacates the premises the minute she, she turns any bullshit his way. He won't put up with it. He has the strength to go, I'm better off on my own. Go fuck yourself. See you later. And he leaves. Right? That's why. She finds him the most attractive person in the room because that's what he does. He leaves. He doesn't put up with her. This is a girl with some daddy issues. She wants discipline. And he gives her discipline. But he doesn't want to. He doesn't want this woman. He wants the woman, the phantom woman, that she said she was going to introduce him to. She lied to him to get him here. And not only that, this is where you are and she's rubbing it in your face. What the fuck is going on with this woman? Honestly. This Mark dude, though, class act. Class act, I have to say. Because, uh, you know, if a woman did this to me and said, Oh, listen, I'll make it up to you. I, you know, I've got a friend who will like you. I'd, I'd be curious. I'd be like, oh, do you know what? I'll go along. I wanted to get into 40k anyway. I'll go along. And, you know, worst thing that happens is I don't get along with a friend. And, you know, I, I go home. Right? Um, but it is cla this is class act, man. He comes straight up to you. He, he asks if you're the guy from the phone call. Or, or did he? I don't know. Uh, you haven't really elaborated. But then he tells you straight, look, I didn't know. I didn't know you were here. I didn't know this is what this was. I'm gone. I'm really sorry, dude. Didn't mean for it to happen. Top bloke. Top bloke. This is Omerta, guys. This is what you're supposed to do. Right? Don't don't break your morals or, or the men for women. Don't. Walk away. Just go, nah, I'm not doing this. Sorry. Just walk away. And you know what? He carries on. So so th this is closed quote now. So this is uh, just Riker talking to us. And you know what? I snapped. I absolutely snapped. But not at him. The following argument was me cussing out Justine in my broken Italian and my so-called friends backing her up as they had not seen what I had seen. She had split the group into sectors, cliques, and was playing them against each other. Then... She brings some dude she fucked whilst in a relationship with me to the gaming group and rubs it in my face. I was at my wit's end. Then the unexpected happened. Mark stood up for me. He told the group all about her behaviour and told her to her face that, and I quote, in my best Italian, I'm not saying this in an Italian, in an Italian accent, dude. You know. But he said to her, and I quote at the end of his argument, you should keep that rancid fucking pussy away from bros who are just here to roll some dice. I am out. <laughs> well, well, this is a, this is a, uh, a Chaddy McChaddington, folks. <clears throat> that was his sign off and he left without looking back. I walked out too. Good, good man. Good man. I was in tears, but I offered Mark a lift home, and he told me he still felt a bit weird, but fine. During the car ride, we talked about Justine and what the hell was going on. He asked if I was going back to the gaming group, and I said, Nah, probably not. It's kind of a poisoned well now, and I can't really speak the language well enough to, like, get my point across. He nodded and thought to himself. As if making a decision when we pulled up to his place... He asked to swap numbers with me and said, This was really shitty on you, dude. No word of a lie. I'm not doing this because I feel bad for you, but uh, you don't deserve to lose your friends. So here's my number. I run a metal... Uh, I run, sorry, I'm going to read that again. I run a metal music meetup group in town and we head for drinks out and about all the time. I am the only 40k guy there, but I'm sure there's someone there you could get to know. With that, he clapped me on the shoulder and got out. I was, I was resolved to not speak to him again, even though the offer was very kind. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. You're prerogative. I received texts and phone calls from Justine demanding an answer for my behaviour. This, 
This fucking gash. This fucking piece of shit. This is this is sociopathic behaviour. This is a lunatic. She's demanding answers for your behaviour. What? Demanding answers for my behaviour, and when I left her on blast, she started calling into question my manhood, my life, my looks, everything. Because that's what they do, man. That's what toxic women do. When you get a toxic woman in your life, you know she's toxic when immediately, in an argument, she goes after your manhood. Immediately. Right? She goes after your, your, your status as a man. A real man would, yeah? Really? Go find one then. Fuck off. I'll tell you what a real man would do. He wouldn't put up with your bullshit. So, see ya. Off you go. Right? Th this is exactly what they do. It's their A1. The A1 of toxicity from a woman. They call into question your manhood, your achievements, right? Your life itself, your looks. They call all that into question. Because they, they... But all you need to do when this happens is accept the victory you've won. As soon as they start doing this, they have nothing left. They have nothing left. They know they're in the wrong. They hate themselves. And that's where they stoop to these lows. They're wrong. They're, and they know they're in the wrong. They know you've won. This is their final swipe. Their final petty. Well, fuck you. Okay, bye. Goodbye. Right? Just say goodbye and walk away. Don't even give her the satisfaction of your hatred. I don't hate you. I nothing you. Because you're a nothing person. Walk away. Just walk. It was a horrible couple of weeks, and finally, I caved and texted Mark in one of my lonely hours. He invited me to a Friday night hangout here in Milan. There was metal music, beer, and no shortage of women in corsets. One of which I ended up dancing with, swapping numbers with, and, date and I am dating to this day. That's cool, man. Awesome. I found out on our first date that Mark had been the one to talk me up to the ladies of the group before I even got there and made no mention of Justine or how me and Mark had met. He knew I wasn't very good with Italian, and so he did the, the, he did the groundwork for me before I ever showed up. So there were a few ladies out that night who already had their eye on me when I turned up. Th dude. I do want to... If you're, if you're in a place where you can applaud right now, applaud this man. Applaud this man. This absolute legend. Applaud the... When I first, when this started, and and this guy Mark called up in this story, I was I was determined to hate him. I was like, oh, what kind of guy does this? And then I was like, no, actually, no, he's in the right. He, he he's, he's kept his bro code. And then once again, he turns up to the gaming group, and I'm like, what kind of a guy does this? Oh no, no, he didn't know. Okay, fine. And he and he sorted it out. And now, yeah, dude, this 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 is a this is a this is a guy you. I don't care how this guy came into your life. This is a guy you need around. This is a guy you need around. Cultivate this man. Cultivate this man and keep him in your life. As long as you don't turn toxic or nasty, cultivate this dude and keep him in your life as a good friend. So, my girl's name is Maria, and we are going strong and steady. On Fridays, she wears the corset in our place, even if we don't go out, as she knows I think she looks amazing in it, and I like to watch her walk around. This is that's good, man. That's a good that's a good relationship. That's a good relationship. Ladies, you know your man really likes you when he stops you and he, and he just looks at you. And you say, what's up? And he goes, I just like watching you walk around. Like, you know you know he's besotted with you when he says shit like that. You know, absolutely. Uh, me and Mark meet up for games of 40k. He has his Imperial Guard on the go now. And I have my Eldar still. They are good games over cans of beer. Mark is still single and loving it with a new woman on his arm, it seems, every single month. He never gets into drama, though, it seems. He says it's because he's always honest with them, and the minute drama starts, he walks away. Anyway, from what I hear, a year later, the old gaming group split up quietly and went their separate ways into their own cliques. Justine, so I am told, dated around the group and was eventually a known shit-stirrer, but that's, that is just how it goes, and that's as far as I know. Now I get to show off my hot Italian lady whenever I fly home to the UK. She's an amazing person, and I'm so relieved this worked out. Ciao, Riken. 
Dude, that's really cool. Like, I, I'm, I'm really happy that that worked out and that you, you found a bro. In the most unlikely of circumstances. The most unlikely of circumstances there. Um, but yeah, the, the reason why... I'm, I'm going <laughs> to... I'll tell you now, the reason why he's got women around him is because he's got that attitude. I don't care what this Mark looks like. Or Marco. I don't care what he looks like. Right? The, the reason why he's got women around him because he's got that He doesn't give a shit. He doesn't give a shit. You are on my time. I'm out here having a good time with my friends. And I don't give a shit if I go home on my own or not. I'm comfortable I'm comfortable in my own skin, wearing my own clothes, and I think, you know, in a non-arrogant way, I think I'm a really cool dude. If you go out with that attitude, no one can resist you. Absolutely no one. Men or women. Men want to be your friend, and women either want to be your friend or want to sit on your face. One of the two. Right? It just... It's just how it works. It's just how it works. It's, it's natural magnetism, and you can learn it. You can learn it. It's learnable. It's a learnable skill. Right? Especially when you internalize it so it becomes real. That's the sweet spot. When you internalize it so this is actually who you are now, that's the sweet spot. Right? There are ways and means of doing it. Reps is the main, is the main kind. Take all, all the pressure out of your social interactions and go out and get reps. Talk to men, talk to women, talk to everybody. All right? That's the way you start. But I've done other videos now to do it, so I'm not going to go into them here. Because I'll sound like a broken record. Anyway, love you all a long time. I will speak to you. There is a bonus video tomorrow or Sunday. Don't know when I'm going to put it up. About the state of the channel and what the channel is going to be from this moment going forwards. And what the channel is and isn't. Because it's a special video I did for my patrons. Uh, my patrons, sorry. That, you know, could also be of use to you guys. I'm going to release it over the weekend. I love you a long time. Speak to you really soon. Have a good one. Bye now.